Hello, and welcome to the Science of Terragenesis. Episode 2, Welcome to the Solar System. Hey folks, this is Alexander Wynn. Today we're going to be talking about the various real-world planets and moons available in Terragenesis, what makes them unique, and how we integrated them into the game. We're also going to be talking about the unique character of each of these worlds, what factors make them different from the others, and how they would pose unique challenges to explorers and settlers, both in-game and in real life. Planets and moons, or as we refer to them collectively, worlds, are the basic unit of any solar system and the central core of gameplay in Terragenesis. Every game is based on a particular world, and every world is its own self-contained game. I knew from day one that a big part of making Terragenesis interesting was going to be the worlds that were available to explore. Not just making them look pretty, but also bringing out the unique character of each world, both physically and in terms of its statistics. Terraforming Mars is a very different proposal from terraforming Venus, and that needed to come through in the gameplay. When Terragenesis first launched, there were only nine worlds. Mars, Venus, Earth, Mercury, and the Moon made up the real worlds, and then four fictional worlds called Bacchus, Pontus, Lethe, and Ragnarok. They weren't even grouped into bundles, just all listed out in a row. But even then, I put a premium on keeping them as accurate and realistic as possible. I was tired of playing on games that were theoretically set on Mars, but which used generic red lumps of rock instead of the actual planet's map. So for every world in the game, I looked up real surface maps and height maps from NASA and filled in the data of surface temperature, air pressure, oxygen levels, and sea levels as accurately as I could. I scoured the internet for references to the highest and lowest points on each world so I could calculate their elevation range and accurately render oceans on their surface. I did everything I could to make sure each world came to life with a unique character, aesthetic, and gameplay challenge for the player. The first world for new players was always going to be Mars. Mars isn't just the most famous planet outside of Earth. It's also an incredibly dramatic and iconic world. Mars has the tallest mountain in the known universe, the longest valley in the known universe, the biggest impact crater in the known universe, and more. Its surface is cold and its atmosphere is thin, but neither so outside the realm of Earth's norms that it made it hard to play. Mars is, both in and out of Terragenesis, the perfect world to begin space exploration. On the other side of the spectrum, we have Venus. Venus is a living nightmare. Its gravity is almost the same as Earth's, but the surface is a fractured hellscape of volcanoes and lightning, temperatures hot enough to melt lead, sulfuric acid rains, and an atmosphere so choked with carbon dioxide that it's thicker than seawater. This was always going to be a higher difficulty world, and I often chuckle at the messages from players who complain that I made the starting stats of Venus way too hard. Don't blame me, folks. I'm just the messenger. Venus is the worst. Venus was also the catalyst for the toughest bit of math that went into making Terragenesis, figuring out how to calculate an atmosphere's contribution to the surface temperature of a planet. Venus is boiling hot, in large part thanks to its atmosphere, but since Terragenesis allows you to change the atmosphere, I needed a way of calculating how hot Venus would have been without one. That took me into all sorts of black body radiation calculations, for which I was wildly unprepared, but eventually I figured out a formula that worked well enough, and it remains in Terragenesis to this day. The final step in the original trilogy of worlds was Earth. I often say that my goal with Earth as a playable world was to make it feel like you've been handed someone else's game of Terragenesis half-completed and played badly. It wasn't about bringing life to a dead world. It was about keeping a living world alive while a bunch of things have already been set in motion that could threaten to kill it. This was also the chance to bring the lessons of Terragenesis back home for the player. You raised the sea level on Mars, now let's see if you can stop it from rising on Earth. I still get hate mail every so often from a climate change denier about the Earth level in-game. 
Honestly, I'll never understand how anyone could be surprised at the existence of climate change in a game that is literally about changing the climate, but hey, what can you do? Finally, the moon and Mercury rounded out the original set of playable worlds. These are both gray rocks, fairly boring and distinguished mostly by their starting temperature. Mercury is hot, the moon is cold. One of my favorite space facts of all time applies to Mercury, which is that it rotates at about the same rate as a brisk walk, so you could theoretically walk forever in the light of dawn on the surface of Mercury, but I have yet to figure out how to apply that to gameplay in Terra Genesis. About a year and a half later, I released Terra Genesis 3.0, which included 15 new playable worlds, the major moons of Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus. This was a huge effort and almost tripled the number of worlds available in-game. From Io, on which thousands of volcanoes are erupting at any given moment, to Europa with its subsurface liquid water ocean. And from Titan, with an atmosphere thicker than Earth's, to Miranda with the tallest sheer cliff in the known universe. Each of these worlds followed the same pattern of real maps, real surface stats, and as much detail as I could add. Later, I added Triton, the sole major moon of Neptune as well. I didn't include the gas giants themselves, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, because terraforming a gas giant isn't possible without some major, deep future space magic. But their moons were fair game, and in 2019, we added the ability to see their parent planets rising in the background. So in a way, they eventually made an appearance too. The addition of these moons also necessitated the creation of a new type of world in-game, an ice moon in which a substantial portion of the world's mass is made up of water ice, forcing the player to deal with it before they can start warming up the surface. I also added a bundle of dwarf planets not long after, including one of the most famous not-a-planets of all time, Pluto. The funny thing about Pluto, along with several of the gas giant moons, is that we've actually only mapped about half the surface. My doctrine of using real maps hit a wall, because no real map existed that showed the other side. I ended up hiring an artist who specialized in fantasy maps to fill in the gaps in NASA's data. I remember hearing Peter Jackson talking about working with his concept artists on The Lord of the Rings and asking, I have this great image of the front door of Bag End or the bottom of Orthanc Tower, but could you just draw the rest of it, please? I felt very similar asking an artist to take a highly detailed map of Pluto and just, you know, show me what the backside might look like. The last two bundles of playable worlds came considerably later. The Trappist-1 system was a seven-world bundle, the largest to date, inspired by the recent discovery of the Trappist-1 system of exoplanets, in which seven Earth-sized worlds orbited in a single system. I had no idea what any of these worlds looked like, of course, but I based their appearance on a NASA concept sketch and added a unique storyline and game mechanics, including the first appearance in Terra Genesis of intelligent alien life. And finally, Historical Earths was one of the headline features of Terra Genesis 5.0 in 2019. For the first time, we were adding playable worlds not based on exoplanets and moons, but different eras of our own world's history. I had to do, well, I say had to. I got to do a ton of research into the major epochs of what is called deep time in geological circles and try to piece together what continental configurations may have existed in each period to try to remain as accurate as possible. We even threw in a representation of Pangaea Ultima, the theoretical future supercontinent several hundred million years from now. This bundle was also especially challenging because many of the worlds required handcrafted ecosystems for the biosphere system. Nobody's gonna wanna play in the age of the dinosaurs and not have some friggin' dinosaurs on their planet. So that was another round of research, diving into the ecosystems and major evolutionary branches of each era in order to bring historical Earths to life. And that brings us up to today. There are currently 45 playable worlds in Terra Genesis, plus an infinite number of randomly generated worlds as well. Every single one is represented in as much detail as possible, and there are plenty more being planned. If you're interested in learning more, Check out the descriptions of each world on the orbit selection screen in-game, or look them up online or at your local planetarium. 
There's so much more information out there than could ever make it into a video game, even one like Terra Genesis. And it ranges from the bizarre to the seriously breathtaking. Join us next time as we begin diving deeper into the specific mechanics of both Terra Genesis's gameplay and the real life processes of terraforming and space exploration, starting with surface temperature and air pressure, followed by oxygen levels and the all important presence of liquid water. Be sure to subscribe for more episodes. And in the meantime, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Reddit, Discord, YouTube, everywhere really. You can also check us out at edgeworksentertainment.com and terragenesisgame.com. And don't forget to leave a review for the podcast. It really does help. And if you haven't played it yet, be sure to check out Terra Genesis. It's a free download on iOS or Android and coming soon to Windows. Happy terraforming. <laughs>